Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem swapping nodes in a linked list. We're given the head of a linked list and an integer k and we want to swap the values of two nodes. How do we know which nodes they are? Well, that's what our integer k tells us. So the first node or what I'm going to call it is the left node is going to be the kth node in the list. So this is the first node. This is the second node and in this case k equals two. So this is going to be our left left node. Now the right node is going to work very similarly, except we're going to be starting from the right and counting in the other direction. So one and then two, this is the second node. Once we have a pointer at these two nodes, it's going to be very straightforward to swap them because we can just take the values and swap them. And then we get a resulting linked list that looks like this down here. The four is now over here and the two is over here. So the obvious way to solve this problem would be just to start at the beginning iterate k minus one times, which in this case would just be iterating a single time. And then we'd have a pointer at the left node. How do we get a pointer at the right node? Well, we can't work our way to the left because the linked list is a singly linked list. But the easiest thing to do would just be calculate the length. In this case, it's five. And then we would want to iterate five minus k times. In this case, that's going to be five minus two, which is going to give us three. So what we would do is start all the way at the left, iterate one, two, three times, which would land us over here. And then we can swap the two values. That's a perfectly valid way to do it. The time complexity would be big O of N. The space complexity would be constant. But there's a slightly more clever way that you can do it, which I guess I'll show you just because it's a tad bit easier to code up, I think. I blew this up so we can take a closer look at what exactly is going on when we start all the way at the left. We iterate k minus one times. We're over here. Let's say k is equal to two. So now we have a pointer over here. And do you notice that the distance between this and the beginning of the linked list is going to be the same as the distance as the end to the target node on the right hand side? Okay, but how exactly? exactly is that going to help us? Well, the idea is two pointers. That's kind of almost always the idea when it comes to like these complicated linked list questions. Well, sometimes you need even more than two pointers. That's the idea. We're going to one, save the pointer over here because we are going to need a reference to it. But then what we're going to do is create another copy of that pointer. And we're also going to initialize a pointer at the beginning of the linked list. What we're then going to do is take these two pointers, shift them by one each time time. So we shift it by one here, then shift them again to their over here, then shift one more time until they're over here. By the time that our second pointer lands at the end of the linked list, we know that the previous pointer will be at the other target node. And we know that because the distance between this is k minus one, just like over here. So that is the way I'm going to be solving this. Again, the time complexity is going to be big O of n and no additional space because we're just using two pointers over here. So now let's code this up. Okay, so we're given our head of the linked list and that's what we're going to initialize our current pointer to initially. And then we're just going to iterate k minus one times and each time just taking the current pointer and shifting it to the right. By the way, we are guaranteed that the length of the linked list is going to at least be k. So we'll never end up going like out of bounds here or getting like a null pointer exception or anything like that, which is great. And after that loop is done executing, we know that current will have our left node. So let's save that in a separate variable. Left is equal to current. Now we also want to find the right node, which we're initially going to set to the head and we're going to continue reusing the current pointer just like this. We're going to say while current dot next is non null, which means while it hasn't reached the end of the linked list, continue shifting the current pointer, but also continue shifting the right pointer, which is going to start at the head to make sure that the distance between these two nodes is always going to be k minus one. So we're going to take right and set it to right dot next. And again, neither of these pointers will give us a null pointer exception because we're guaranteed to have at least k elements. After that's done, all we have to do is swap the two values, which in Python you can actually do in a single line without a temporary variable like this left dot val and right dot val are going to be equal to right dot val and left dot val respectively. The reason you can do it 
in a single line is basically Python takes like a snapshot of the right hand side and then starts evaluating the left hand side. It does evaluate it in order, I believe, like it'll uh, set this one first and then I think set this one. But that doesn't matter because these values will basically have been like snapshotted. At least that's my understanding. And after that's said and done, all we have to do is return the head of the linked list which should not have changed at all. Maybe the value had changed, but the head pointer should not have changed. So we can go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. Whoops, I made a mistake. And that is I didn't actually update the current pointer over here. Sorry about that. Current should be equal to current.next. I don't know how I always make these sloppy mistakes, but now you can see it does work and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.